I've made my first bend on the first EMT. And let me show you how I did it. First thing is, I took and bought this a couple years ago and I made the big greenhouse out there. It's made out of exactly the same thing, uh, three quarter inch PVC. But I took the, P, uh, the first piece of EMT and I put it towards the end and I made it a bend of somewhere between 30 and 45 degrees. You can see it's lined up there. I'm taking the tool and you step on it and pull back at the same time to get the approximate bend in the pipe. Now from the bottom of the EMT here, I measured up four foot and I made a mark here lined up the same way. And then you can see that the top of the bending tool is aligned with the tip there that I've already bent. So now, once we're sure those are lined and the bends are in the same direction, I'll take and I'll make this bend. Making sure to get it about the same. You can see here where they're lying on top of each other and that is to get the match. They're off just a shade right here, uh, but I can straighten that. Once I, I'm gonna flip it and put the other piece on the other side, and that'll tell me which one of those two needs a little bit of adjustment. Real easy. And this is the overall shape of the greenhouse. And every time you do these two halves, and then you connect them, I call that a finished rib or a greenhouse rib. Now to complete this rib I have to fit these two pieces together. I'm going on the inside with half inch EMT. That way all I've got is this one joint that could potentially grab. And so there's the piece six inches. I'll go in some here and then one handed for the camera I'll go in here and we need to fix those two pieces together, right? I mean, you can't have it loose, so I'll show you how I do that. On this half inch connector, I measured to the center, and then I measured an inch away on both sides. I drilled a hole here, and I drilled a hole here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that in here, and I'm going to put a carriage bolt through it as a finished product. But right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the drill and I'm going to drill all the way through both pieces. And there's a carriage bolt slightly through. I'm going to tighten this down just a little bit and I'm going to leave it like that because we've got something else to add to this piece. But for now it's what's going to hold the rib together. Okay now that the first carriage bolt's in, the second marking an inch over, I drilled the big hole then I came across here and I marked this. I'm going to drill the outside here and then I'll go through all uh, four walls or both pieces. So these two boards are going to go across the entire top of the greenhouse and I got one extra one by four for the sole purpose of joining these two pieces and the side pieces. All right, I've joined these. I'm going to take you up underneath here. You see where I've tightened them down. So now I need to put another rib on it at a distance, at the appropriate distance, which is about four feet from the first one there. Now these two ribs are joined and they're about four foot apart, which is actually not very far if you look at it. Now from the bottom, I took a tape measure, put it on the bottom here, and I came up to the topmost part that did not have any bend in it from the side. I wasn't quite okay with 44, it was coming into the bend just a little bit, so I dropped it back down to 43 and I did mark all four of the ribs. Then I drilled a hole through the rib. Once we have one put in and tightened down, we drill the hole all the way through for the second one. There.
there it is. Both sides up here are done and secured with two bolts on each rib. All right, now we've got the bottom. Let me show you why I did it this way. Here's why I cut these to 15 inches. As you can see down here, this three quarter inch EMT rib slipped into here and it's setting flat on the ground. Without that top bolt in, this three quarter inch rib went through the one inch and set on top of that bolt, that carriage bolt. Without this one in, it'll slip down to the bottom. Let me see if I can get it to do that. Okay. With that slipped in, now I can drill through all pieces and put this back in and then this one inch assembly is affixed firmly to this piece here, to the ribs. Here's one half of the greenhouse complete. The bottom, the middle, and the top. First half of the greenhouse brought on the deck. And this is where I'll finish the build and complete assembly for the remainder of the project. And there's our entire four ribs completely secured together. Even though each rib has two bolts at each location, including the top, they're still on a heavy pressure this way or this way. Those could twist. In other words, it could all collapse left or right from how we're looking at it right now. So to prevent that from happening, we're going to put in some bracing. Okay, the bracing's in place. You can see one there, in there, over on the back side, on each side over there. Put this end in first, tighten it down, and I went down there, lifted it up to it was halfway on the board, this way, halfway, and I secured it on the bottom and top as well. Okay, we're going to put the back on. Well, the first thing I do is I make sure that the walls are pretty straight. And then I set one of the treated 2x4s. We're going 2x4s for the wall, the back and front walls. I see on the edge here. And you notice here that I left a 1 half inch, 1 and 1 half inch piece for the uh, extension here. And the back wall is going to connect here. And you can see that it's still too wide here. Looks good up here. I got uh, clearance here for the bolts. Maybe a shade too long, but still definitely doable. Okay, this is it mounted. As you can see, there's a reason why I went on top of this instead of behind it. It's because this is in the way. Let's check it out. We got it in place there. We come around here, and now we can affix it with another bolt. On Backboard in place for the middle. I've only got one screw holding it in there, and the same on the other side. There, I drilled it straight through. There you go. Bolt on the, this one, so you can see. And we come on the other side, same thing. On the bottom brackets, I had to do something a little bit different because of the way it's set up. It doesn't have the bracing bar piece over here. Before I can put up the centerpiece here, I've got to install a window up here, and the window has got to be integrated into the centerpiece for support. I used one and a half, one and five eighths inch screws here. Now I brought you over here because I wanted to show you some different joining methods. You could see the way I did it here. I'm trying to keep this board as close to in line with this. Uh, rib as possible, but it doesn't have to be. I mean, really, you could carry it longer here and join the two pieces together like this and drill directly in here or just use wood screws. Now, you'd need to affix either this one or this one to this, which would mean longer one quarter inch bolts to bolt it in. Not an issue. And I guess the, what I'm trying to tell you out of all that is that whatever you use here kind of use the same thing for the window and the back brace and the front make it all kind of uniform and the same spacing um, the same width from the ribs and all that 
So and again, you could put a 2x4 on top of a 2x4 here and then uh, do it that way or a 1x4 on top of, you could put like a sandwich of 1x4 over here to make the lines and uh, or to connect the two pieces together. Any which way you slice it, it'll work. Next we take the board that's going across the middle of the back and we make a line on it here two here above and below the board here and up there at the top and you can see the lines here and probably see them up there on the glare on the screen here take the skill saw there and cut off the end okay it's partially in place now I've got to cut into this board and that means I got to measure this board halfway from that side of this side over here and then the window's got to be fit in, so this is not going to be solid up here. It's going to be cut out for the window. So after I had this middle piece put here, as you can see from the previous, just a minute ago when I showed you this, I held the window up and by hand I measured um, not by hand measuring, but I took the pencil and marked the bottom of where the window is going to be. I marked it here and here, and then I cut out the groove. So I have the piece up there that goes from the very top. Let me see my fingers in the window. Yeah, it goes from the top there to here, and I have to cut out the center. From the, the load bearing part of this is going to be the way this is cut and fitted together. So all I did was put two more. Uh, decking screws on the top and bottom there. It's time to put on the front door to the greenhouse. This is a 36 inch screen door that I got from Lowe's. Any big box store will have these. What I need to do now is create the frame that this door is going to fit onto plus the frame that the plastic will cover and secure to. So the first way how I'm going about doing it is I'm going to hold it up and I'm going to mark, I'm going to hold it completely vertical and I'm going to mark each piece of the EMT here. Now, there you go, you can see the mark here and the mark here. Plastic is going to come down and it needs to be secured in some way. And that's the purpose of the wood in the front of the greenhouse, well the back too. But it's a dual purpose on the front because not only does it secure with those one and a half inch boards here, it also provides a rest for the door. Clamped it in place, and this is a temporary hold, of course, so I can get the measurements. And I can make the cut line on both sides. And I took my chop saw and made the cuts. And I took the mark and I drilled two holes using a smaller bit. I'm not sure exactly what size it is, but it's smaller than the, than the screw I'm going to use. And I drilled one here and here. And those are going to fix that piece I just cut. I've got screws in place there and there as you can see. And now it's time to set that board. And there it is secure. So you hear that couple taps with the hammer, recess this a little bit, nice and strong. Looking down the line here, you can see that it's more over this way, which is what we need for the up top up there. So once they're cut to size, we come around and we look up here, they're fixed with four screws. Now we need to put the bottom piece in that goes from there to there and the piece that goes from there to there and the final piece will go from that to there. And we're going to do it just like we did the back but with framing in the door. First we'll take a measurement from here to here and cut a piece of wood to fit. And here's the four pieces cut. I took a measurement from the bottom of the greenhouse right here all the way to the top of the greenhouse not the top but this part of the side of the greenhouse and I did the same thing over here on the door 
and there's my two marks for the cutout right there I also put the cutout from the bottom and I did it on both sides here's the frame on the front finished and you can see areas where I join them together like here is flat nothing protruding more or less because there's going to be a door opening and closing on it it is fixed the exact same way as the back side and there's a screen door put back in place temporarily it's not on hinges yet and I've got some things to do with the door so it's not going to be installed until after the plastic so now we're at the final part for the greenhouse build and that's the plastic the plastic of fixing the door and the window in the back but for the plastic what we got to do is we need to look at the greenhouse and try to find every potential snag area so let's let's say the greenhouse plastic comes around over here and down you can see there's a little bit of an edge here that's a that's a potential um, rubbing spot you come up here you come over here you hit this edge up here that's a potential rubbing spot so we're going to go around the entire greenhouse and uh, look for all these potential rubbing spots all right as you can see took my router and i curved this off took the sander and took this edge off here because you just, you just got to kind of imagine how the plastic is going to fold down over different pieces. So before we can put the plastic on, it's wise to prepare the strips that are going to hold it down. Guess what guys? Greenhouse plastic is in! I think this was about 72, 73 bucks. I wanted to mention to everybody here that, in my opinion, this is the absolute most important part of any greenhouse the most important part any plastic besides green specifically made for greenhouse plastic any plastic you buy like at the big box or any place like that that will break down in less than a year i've done it many times i've made these mistakes so listen to me when i say you need good greenhouse plastic on your greenhouse okay i have the plastic draped over nothing is secured down and i wanted to get the front lined up first it's going to wrap around to get it so i'm doing it correct from front to back so any excess is going to be on the back we're using the seam as a pretty good idea if it's square see that seam there I'm at uh, 14, almost 14, yeah, 14 and a half. So we'll go over to the other side and see if we're about the same. If we're pretty close, we can, okay, this is a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring this side into 14 and kind of give it a shake and realign everything. Okay, I've got it generally where I want it. Now we're gonna start, not on the bottom like you'd think, but we're gonna start here with a strip, a holding strip, and we're going to pull the plastic, after we've secured one, we're gonna pull the plastic and secure a short strip here. Okay, on this strip, I only put the second one in. Now I'm gonna pull the plastic from here over, and then I'm gonna tighten this. And then we'll pull, we'll tighten it going this way, tighten, pull it again, tighten, and so on. As I was doing this, I, I remember what I had to do on the other one because of the wind. And this is wise, I'm sure. Pretty wise. So you put this one up first, and before you do the bottom strip, you go around on the other side and you do the same thing over here. And that's because when the wind hits it, uh, if, you, if you don't have either time to do the bottom, or it gives you, it gives you time to not worry about the bottom. And the wind hits it while you're doing it, the top is secured. Now it'll, the wind could go this way and flap this around some, but that's not going to hurt anything. As I tighten the bottom, I'm going to put the strip up here and I'm going to line it with the edge. And I'm going to take some of the plastic, I have to do this while filming, like, see there? And I'm going to squeeze it with my finger and my thumb and I'm going to pull it down with my left hand like this to make the side taut and then I'm going to set the screw. 
Um, you see how it's kind of folded over here? Um, you can see that if the rain drips down, it won't catch in here because I have the fold bent down. I could have done that the other way and rain would hit it and it would fill up and, you know, pour out the side or somewhere. But if I, if you don't make a fold like this, what you end up doing is you have to cut the plastic and that weakens the overall structure because the only thing holding these two pieces together would be another strip. You'd have to put another strip here and that one strip would hold both pieces. If this fold bothers you too much, you can actually just make the cut and put another strip in there. Um, I prefer to put the fold in it um, because if an edge, and, and it has happened, if an edge just comes out a little bit and over time the wing catches it, it'll rip it apart and then the wing can get in and billow this whole thing. And anyway, uh, it could end up pulling off parts before you catch it. Wanted to show you what the plastic looks like in the morning. It's about 8, 8.30 in the morning. And you can see how taut the plastic is. Taut, tight. <laughs> and uh, it looks a lot better when it's tighter, doesn't it? This is the greenhouse completely closed in with plastic. Now I've placed the anchor in each strap and so it's not going to obviously face up they're going to be driven into the ground and that's 18 inch length so probably i don't know at least 15 inches are going to be into the ground and that will anchor the greenhouse now i bought some screening spline that's basically this stuff right here i took my roto zip tool here and i made a channel all the way across this one It's not the prettiest, but I think it'll function well. I also cut a piece of plastic that's going to go here. It's going to cover this entire area. So this part's going to be screened and this part's going to be plastic. And the seam, I ran both the screen and the plastic along this new seam I made. Now I'm running the plastic only down this way. And if you don't have one of these tools, you can get them at the same place you get this stuff here. And uh, I think it's near the paint and Lowe's. I'm not sure about Home Depot and the other box stores. But uh, anyway, this is made for that to put it in here and move it along and push it in the little gap there. Okay, plastic is on all the way around. And over this one, I put extra staples. But also just for insurance, I put staples all the way around in various places. I just don't want the uh, little stripping to start pulling out. Frame is screwed together. And this is what it looks like on the other side. So that's what it's going to look like. And it's going to be on hinges and lift up. On the other side, you can see that I put staples in and I took each corner bracket off and it's I uh, put the plastic underneath it and put the screws down and did each one one at a time and the handle same kind used on my big greenhouse so this is what holds the door closed if you want to open it just do that and lift it up it's in there snug and you can see that the door width is wider than the strip width and that creates a problem with putting hinges up so I'm going to have to put some scrap 1x2's here so it matches up with the door. And so there you have it, door installed. Now I put this on here, I had a clasp, a metal clasp. It didn't quite line up and do as well and I thought this looks pretty good actually. It's what I've been using in my greenhouse for a really long time. So that opens and closes or keeps it closed. And then you can see here, we just open it just like so. And that has it. There you go. I'm going to create a shelf here. You can see I cut a 30 inch piece of wood to match the frame of the window. And I have it vice down. I'm going to screw it in 
from the other side over here in four different locations and that'll create a shelf. Now you can see here I've made a door that is covered in plastic that way you can completely seal up the greenhouse and there'll be no no uh, wind no environment whatsoever will be completely sealed. What I did was took a piece of 100 pound nylon cord and I tied it around that area there and it is strong to the window. I've got a little hook here and that's to grab and pull it and open it and it's also to hold it in place here. I'll just let the nylon cord hang down so you can see this is fully open. It's fully closed and you can see that the nylon cord will hold here to keep it out of the way. Or if you wanted to, you could take it off and just wrap it around the edge like that. If you have electricity, you can put a box fan in it like I've done here. And you can set it on a timer or a switch. And that way, when that is open and this door is completely closed, air will pull in from here. I feel it right now while we're talking with the fan on medium and it'll keep the greenhouse much cooler. If you don't have, if you have that flap closed and the front door flap closed, it absolutely boils in here. And if you're a winter gardener, that is good news. It'll keep your plants nice and toasty warm in the middle of winter.